I'm going to show you some really stupidly simple things for concert photography today. You won't even believe it. And I guarantee you nobody else on, on forums anywhere, YouTube, whatever, is talking about this kind of stuff for concert photography until now. I'm Robert Maxfield. I'm a concert photographer in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, and welcome to my channel. Feel the power, baby. I'm telling you, nobody ever talks to you about the electrical power that goes on in your digital camera. It's always a big thing. They always say, well, that, that Sony camera runs out of battery power, that, that Nikon camera runs out of battery power really, really quickly. And that's a problem. So we're going to cover on our first topic today a little bit about battery power. And uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is how I cure battery and power issues at festivals. People on YouTube will talk to you about all kinds of cameras and lenses and things like that, but they will not talk to you about the accessories. So you'll have specifics on this camera and, and this sensor and this many megapixels and junk like that. You'll have uh, issues where, where people will tell you about this lens and that lens and which one's faster but not anybody will talk to you about this little accessory right here and in the old days they it used to take the place of what was called a uh, a motor drive or a uh, 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 film advance um, an auto winder today this device that goes on the bottom of your camera looks the same but it doesn't have any of those features it actually holds a second maybe a third one of these batteries so what it does effectively is it takes and increases the length of time you can be shooting because you've added an extra battery to the bottom of your camera and all you do is screw it on and that that increases your battery life now the one I've got for my Nikon D800 is very expensive. It's, uh, if you were to buy one new, it'd be $426 in most places. But I bought mine used, and I paid like $95 for it used. And it's the real deal. It's the real Nikon. They make, uh, several different manufacturers make uh, generics that are quite a bit less. They run anywhere from like, seventy nine dollars to um, roughly two hundred dollars depending on the quality and the brand but what this does is it has these cartridges and I've got two of these cartridges that came with it one of them holds uh, another ENEL 15 battery just like what's inside the camera and another one holds four AA batteries that you can use just about anywhere so uh, that is a big, big deal to have electrical power. You don't have, you, it carries and mounts to the bottom of your camera. You don't have to fumble in the dark for, for battery power. You don't have to mess with none of that. And uh, that's one of the big advantages of this accessory. And you, all different brands um, have them. I just showed you the Nikon one. Here's a Canon one. It gives you a grip on the side of it. This one holds, this little jewel, holds uh, two batteries and there's a uh, it takes the place of a battery that's inside so it's still just two batteries but it doubles the life of your um, your power so it, that's a that's a very important thing when you're at, at festivals and you're shooting nine ten bands in, in a day you don't have to worry about it so hang on just a second I'm going to show you the next thing with power it'll just absolutely drive you insane This drives me absolutely nuts. And um, one of the things that I do a day or two, maybe three days before uh, any show that I do is I put all my batteries on chargers. And for the most part, most cameras come with, a, with one charger and you're good. You plug the battery in and you wait about two or three hours and it's charged your battery. But when I've got attachments like that, uh, that uh, battery grip, I need two or more and I have probably four or five of these chargers 
laying around all over the all over the studio and what I'll do is I'll plug them all up at the same time that way I'm not having to go one after another and I'll charge three or four of them maybe five of them all at the same time and uh, I'll be good to go it saves a whole lot of time and uh, that's a that's a big problem is is getting prepared because man undoubtedly you'll wait until the last minute and uh, you'll have to charge your batteries and you only got one charger and you're wasting your time now now my little pet peeve that really bugs me to death I bought a Sony camera I I, I use primarily uh, Nikon and Sony's and I've used Sony's for quite a while but Sony really kind of cheaped out on this last camera I bought the lens didn't come with a with a tail cap and the body didn't come with a body cap but more important the camera didn't come with a charger it came with a USB cord and a plug and that is it so I was like in order to charge the camera the camera battery you got to plug the whole damn thing into uh, a USB port and sit there and wait until it takes forever to charge and that is just a pain I hate it so first thing I did I went out on Amazon and I bought this little joy and what this does it came with two batteries they're real batteries and you plug it up USB and you can charge two batteries at the same time because let's face it that Sony camera is not exactly fuel efficient so um, I've got two batteries running and uh, normally I carry three f for my ZV-E10 and they're, it's just quicker to charge them two at a time than it is one at a time and in the camera where you can't use the camera for anything because the freaking little cord is only about this long it's it's it's, it's a pain in the butt um, but they I guess that's how they save money so um, I can't say enough about getting extra battery chargers and extra batteries now on top of that to make that matters even worse my camera had a 44 percent charge on its battery before I started this video so what I did is I bought this device that's called a battery replacement and it's got a long cord and a power adapter on it heck I don't know what a power adapter is oh here's the power adapter right here and uh, what it does is it plugs into the electric in the wall and then the battery replacement goes where the battery normally goes and it provides battery power to the camera uh, while it's being plugged into the electric so uh, I've got one of my batteries charging right now the one was at 44 percent uh, last night and uh, I'm getting ready because I gotta make a lot of videos today for various uh, other not only this YouTube channel but others but um, I've got to have it charged and this replaces the battery so power is a big deal and um, that's the first part of accessories that no one will talk to you about or tell you about in constant photography is feeling the power the next is just the little piddly irritating things that save you time and energy Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned this during the during that last section. I use a whole lot of Nikon batteries. I keep a bunch of them around the, these ENL15 EL15s, and what I'll do is I will buy them used from B&H, and typically I'll get them for about half the price of what a brand new um, version of the of the um, battery is. Uh, have I had any problems? No, I got probably three or four of these laying around and I can get the Nikon Nikon brand uh, for half the price and I haven't worn one out yet so I'm not real worried. I keep others and enough of them on hand to not have to have deal with a problem if I have one arise. So you might consider also buying a few extra batteries. The, some of the used ones, they wouldn't sell you a used one without, you know, with a problem I don't think so uh, give that a try let's face it we're all concert photographers here or we want to be or something like that so and we're notorious for fumbling around in the dark sometimes that's a great thing sometimes it can be a problem so I have a problem constantly losing my lens cap 
and I've lost it, it shows, and I've found it again, and I've lost it, shows, and I've found it again. It's a pain in the butt. So what do you do? Okay. I put these little cap holders on them. They're very inexpensive. They're like $250 a piece. And I let the, let the lens cap just hang when I'm shooting. It stays out of the way. It doesn't detach. It doesn't go anywhere. I don't lose it. And I've got it. So when I'm done shooting, I just put it right back on. It saves from, from damage to the lens. It's quick. It's effective. It's cheap. And I think I've got another one laying around here somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, you can't have enough of them because this bad boy, the lens caps are, are expensive. And, and they make them so that they'll fit just about any kind of lens that you want to deal with. This is on a 80 to 200. So... And you just all it does is it wraps around your lens with a piece of elastic, and and uh, glues to the front of the lens cap. And when you take the lens cap off, it just kind of hangs like that. They're simple and inexpensive. So that is the my one of my second tip for today. Hang on to your lens caps. Get one of those cap keeper elastic straps and stick them on it'll save you a pain in the neck I have a habit sometimes of what I'll do is be too lazy to put them on and I'll lose a cap I'll, I'll go around and I'll hunt for it I'll find it again it just saves you from hunting so that's tip number two is hang on to your cap baby because it's, it's going to fall off you got to watch it the next thing that you need to know about that's real important is your hearing. I, I see a lot of people want a pit pass, they want a media pass, they want to go backstage and all that and the first thing that they do is they go back there with no hearing protection. It's loud back there. In fact my, my Apple watch tells me when it reaches a certain decibel level and says hey dummy you, you, it's too loud for you here. So what do you do? I got hearing protection. I suggest there's several manufacturers of them. The, the one I got here is by some company that I can't pronounce. Itamatic. I, I think that's how you pronounce it. It comes with a little carrying case. That case has a little chain that goes on. You can strap it on whatever you want. It comes with uh, foam plugs or it comes uh, with contour grips, grips kind of like that, and uh, when you're down in the, in the pit area, the first thing you want to do is put them, when the music starts to get loud, is put them on, uh, it, this brand, I'm kind of, I'm kind of okay with, I had to go to the foam ones for, for most everything, because uh, I couldn't really tell a lot of difference between uh, the, the rubber ones and, and anything, but you can still hear the sound uh, and the sound quality with them really, really well. And it goes into my next thing that nobody really talks about is the fanny pack. So what's in my fanny pack? Why do I carry a fanny pack? Well, I don't like to carry all my crap in, in, in all my bags and then lose them everywhere and mess with them. So I wear a fanny pack. Guess what it's got in it? It's got batteries. It's got my business cards. It's got um, my hearing protection. And it's got this little jewel right here. These cost me a dollar on Wish. All right. One of the things that's really cool, I guess it's cool, is living with two women, you get exposed to a lot of things that you never get exposed to anywhere else. And they were shopping on Wish. So I, they said, you got to try this. You got to look at this. So I went out and I found that it had SD card holders. Okay, an SD card holder is probably about 10 bucks uh, if you buy it from a camera store. These are a dollar. So it took six weeks to get here and it came with all kind of Chinese stamps all over it. 
I don't care. I didn't spend that much money. I spent, a, I bought two or three of them. I spent a dollar a piece on them. And I tried out, believe it or not, I bought one of these Jumbo Extreme Pro 256 gigabyte uh, SD cards. It works. I don't know if it's to the real capacity or whatever. I don't recommend it, but just for the funsies, I went and bought one to see. So in a pinch, what I'll do, if I need something to copy real quick, I'll use it, and it works okay. Um, but, man, I'm not using it for frontline duty at all. So um, a fanny pack with all your gear, keep your business cards in it, keep uh, your hearing protection in it, your batteries in it. Uh, if you have other devices, for those of you that are too lazy to buy the lens cap keepers I just showed a minute ago, you can throw your lens caps in here, but the problem is the thing's open, and then you're dumping stuff all over the place in the dark. That's always fun. So um, get you a fanny pack. This one I paid two dollars for at Joanne's Fabrics. Um, I, I'm sure they have other places that you can get them, and they, and they vary in all kinds of price ranges. This is made out of a what's called a bull denim, and I've had this for a while, and, and it works great. So uh, it's simple, clips on and um, keeps all your stuff organized. Now, let's say for concert photographers are awesome at getting around in the dark. That's what we do. So um, the problem is when it's dark, we have, have, have issues with dealing in the dark, dealing, dealing with stuff. So my roommates for Christmas got me this device. And this little jewel is is really cool. It's called a light glove. And uh, dealing with women again, they 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 are the queens of, of dealing with uh, Amazon. And these little jewels come in a pair, and they run about between eight and ten dollars for them. So one of the nice things about them is they got a little button on them. You click them, and then all of a sudden, flat you get flashlights. So if you drop something on the ground or you look around and you dropped, lost the lens cap or you need to get in that fanny pack I just showed you, these little deal dudes are, are great because they don't produce a whole lot of light so that you're not getting like a big flashlight and blinding somebody. They're fairly bright. They work good in the dark. And then the other thing is when the song comes on that you're absolutely loving, you can go in, hey, you know, it, it's, it's kind, of a, kind of a cool deal. But for 10 bucks. Man, if, you, if you're one of those do-it-yourself home guys and you want to get under your kitchen sink and, and fix that leak, got to have it. If you're under your desk because you dropped your stuff on the floor, that olive you've been looking for for six weeks, man, it's going to do it. So these are really, really cool. And um, that pretty much is what I was going to show you for the things that nobody else will discuss with you that you can use and need when, when it comes to concert photography. Simple little things are time-saving and aggravation-saving, and good grief, man, I, I, I got the patience sometimes of a gnat, and uh, it, it, if I can make myself less stressed uh, by being prepared and having the right equipment and the right gear and not have stupid stuff follow me, uh, man, I am a lot better off. So, um, anyway... Uh, like to thank you for coming if you like this video hey you might watch that video and check it out and we appreciate you coming to our uh, our, our video channel our concert photography max concert photography video channel and we'll see you next week bye oh it's still not on Woo see ya